All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel, Hill Creek Outdoors. Uh, once again, appreciate you coming back. We got some good content for you today on some more accessories that we bought for the Polaris Ranger, the 2022 version, um, Crew XP1000. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on a couple lights, right? We're going to put on um, lights on the top, their spotlights, as well as a backup light. Um, so we're going to get you some information on the review for those products as well as how to install them and we're going to cover that. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you once again. We're going to jump right into it. Here we go. Turn the two on auxiliaries and that's what you have. Great. So here's the items we're going to be installing today. A um, couple of different types of lights. Uh, the one on the right there, it's going to be your spotlights with a harness. Um, as well as you're going to have your plug and play there in the middle and the rear plug and play light that comes on when you put it in reverse. So um, the links for these products are going to be in the description. So check those out if you'd like to purchase it. So we're going to cover these uh, accessories here. So these are going to be uh, D Lumina um, brand. They are going to be a three inch. Um, spotlight they are going to go on the roof I'll show you where they're going to go they come with a couple brackets here and they'll, they'll go right on um, where the kind of the doors hook up on the bottom or on the back you're also going to comes with a wiring harness with a switch so they have them coming directly to a battery so but we're not going to hook it up that way um, on the Polaris Rangers you're going to have the ability to hook up which is called plug and play so we have the plug and play harness here. Um, it's going to be your pigtails for your plug and play. We have three there. Once again, all this, these items are going to be in the description for the links. So check those out. And then we're also, hey, I always go back to Kimoto because they have some really good products for all types of different things, especially for the Polaris Ranger. This is going to go on the rear. So when you put it in reverse, it's a plug and play and you're going to have light to the rear. So if I didn't mention this is a 20 um, watt LED for the spotlights. I'm not sure what this is, but it'll be in the description there. Um, so we're going to get to that here. First thing you're doing is you take this little bracket here, throw it on there like that. Put your, your nut on, get it started with well, my clumsy fingers here would work. Get this started here and go ahead and tighten that down there. Once you tighten it down, you'll next thing you're going to do is you're going to stick this up in here, put your bolt through, put your other locking washer on the other side, along with your nut. You know, tighten it up. Hey, these are uh, 9 sixteenths, just so y'all know. I'm going to tighten this down where it hangs up like so. So once you get that tightened up like so, make sure it's nice and straight. You're going to take your little plug and play clip here. And you're going to pop that out. You're going to run your little wire up through. And you're going to snap it right in. It does have a seal on there so that it is waterproof. Clip that in. You can just set this off to the side. I'm going to zip tie all this stuff together here. That way we don't have to worry about it flopping around. And it's in and out of the way. Just like so. Just with a little zip tie. And we'll cut that off. So there you go. Plug and play. Light is on. We'll get you a picture of this how it is at night here. All right, guys, moving on to this. The next lights here. You are going to have to remove the doors. Check out our uh, other videos there on the canvas doors for the Polaris Ranger XP1000. If you like uh, to get some more information about these doors. So we're going to put this bracket for these rear lights right here. So we're gonna remove this real fast. All right guys, so these these uh, bolts here, they're gonna be uh, 13 milliliters. So they're not, um, they're gonna be metric. 
just so you all know. So make sure you, uh, when you're taking these off, you are watching. There's a uh, piece behind here um, that they screw into. Make sure you don't drop and lose that. So your bracket, we're gonna put it on the inside here. The bracket's gonna go in like this. Put your bolts in there. And then you're just gonna tighten it up. If you're using hand tools, um, it's not such a big deal, but I always get in the habit of always hand starting everything. So whenever you do hand starting, if you're gonna use power tools, you need to make sure you're hand starting everything. So we're using a DeWalt power tools impact wrench. So just get in the habit of doing that. Check out the power tools. We're gonna to put some links in the description as well, or in the description as well for the power tools for the wall that we use on the property. They are really good pieces of equipment. Let's finish this up and I'll show you what we got here. So there's your finished product of the bracket on the driver's side rear. You're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We're gonna work solely on this driver's side first, but you're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I'm just not gonna show that on camera. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bracket. Make sure this is gonna be pointing forward. You don't wanna have it pointing back because then you won't be able to tilt the light down. You're gonna drop your uh, bolt down through there. You're gonna take a locking washer unlocking nut and we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up here so these are 14 milliliters i'm not sure why they made them 14 mils and everything else was 13 but hey that is what it is i don't know why they made these bolts so long what i'll probably do is get some shorter bolts and then get some wing nuts that way you can tighten and loosen it and then angle it however you want in the field that way you can adjust it so put that on there as you can see right inside here let's see if we can get it to zoom right there see those little nuts the, you have to get those dropped in there and then you'll put these Allen bolts in and tighten it down. And once you have it tight, you can adjust it however you want. You can tighten it up, whatever you want. Like I said, I will put a, I'm gonna put a uh, wing nut around here. That way we can adjust it in the field left or right. So we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side and then we're gonna run our wiring harness. All right, so we're going to loosen up the uh, roof here, and we're going to throw our wiring harness in. Let's see if we can't get it loose enough here to throw that in. There's just a foam piece. So we're going to loosen this up. See if we can't get just enough here to slide. I might have to take this all the way out just so we have enough room go ahead and take that all the way out we're gonna throw this up in here so it comes through the roof there we're gonna pull it pull it tight get it in here and then we're gonna plug up right in here with our wiring harness and we should be able to just tie it right up in there somewhere so let's get a clean look in the inside. We already pulled it tight, so we're gonna run it straight up here. Get it nice and clean. Remember, start all your stuff hand tight. Best you can do, start it with your hand, and you use your power tools to tighten it up. like so we're gonna move on to the other side we got that up through that little hole and we're gonna pull it in so with this wiring harness we're going to take one of these pigtails out these go for the lock and ride system underneath the hood red's gonna be constant hot blue is gonna be for the ignition and then your blacks obviously ground so we're gonna hook up to the red because we want it always constantly hot. All right, so let's set this up. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wiring harness. We're gonna cut our red, which is gonna be your hot, and cut that right off, because we're not gonna hook it up to the battery. 
And we're going to get this all set up here for the plug and play. We'll throw those off to the side. Hey, get you a couple uh, heat shrink crimps. And then some heat shrink to go over top of those. I'm going to use red, obviously, for the hot red wire. Black for ground. So we'll show you how to do this here real quick. I'm going to do this. I'm sure if you guys are somewhat coordinated here, you can figure out how to wire um, something up. But we're just going to strip that back a little bit. Strip each one of these. It's not too difficult. I'm sure you guys know how to do this stuff. Make sure you put your... Uh, Heat shrink on before, because if you don't, it's not going to work. It's one thing I suggest you do. Make sure you put all this stuff on your wire first. That way you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to do this off camera. You guys don't need to see me do this. So I'll show you this real quick. Crimp that down. Heat shrink it. It's got your perfect uh, seal there, so you don't get any water in there. I always do an extra step. Like I said, I use a black heat shrink. And I'll put over top of this entire connection just like that. And then the red one will go right over top of that connection just like that. And we'll heat shrink those down to make a really nice looking harness. All right, guys. So here's my finished product. This is what I want to have. I uh, got a zip tie. Put that wire nut on there. Electrical tape. The heat shrink. Made a nice good connection for the harness. So we're going to get that in, put into the uh, side by side. So you're going to have to take the, we're, we're planning on putting the, uh, these two lights in the rear. I'm going to hook them up to a spot right here. So what you're going to have to do is we're going to try to do this without removing the windshield. You're going to take your cluster out here. You're going to take these two trim tools or trim pops out and remove that and put it off to the side. Make sure you guys get you a nice set of trim tools. I have a whole bunch of set. I'll put the link in the description below, the trim tools we use, but hey, you can never have a good set of trim tools. So you're gonna run your harness through the center here up to this hole, and you're gonna pull it through, and we're gonna hook up to one of the, it's probably gonna put it in this plug in place. All right guys, so we got the wiring harness put in here. You gotta reach your hand way up in there. Normally you would have to take out the whole center console, but we tried to do it without doing that, without removing the windshield. So we threw it up through there, hold it through to where you have your fuse right here, and then we plugged it up, like I said, right here. So now we're gonna start to run the rest of the harness back to the lights, and we're gonna run it up through here. So we're going to grab ourselves a, ourselves a coat hanger to make it easy to pull this through. That coat hanger allows you to pull this up through. You can use a rope, string, whatever. I'll use a coat hanger. Now we're going to run it up through here get a nice clean look. Alright guys, so I ran it up through there. Ran it right in that seam there. Wrapped it up around here, used a zip tie to hold it up in there, and then right along the frame underneath, and connected back there to the uh, port. So that's the one side, it's the driver's side, now we're going to do the passenger side. Alright guys, so we got the passenger side ran as well, ran the exact same way, we came up through there. Ran it all the way up, zip tied. I got to cut that off all the way along the roof line frame there and hooked up there at the end. All right, so we're going to put it right here in this one. As you can see, I've already drilled four holes. That way we can cut it out. So we're going to cut that out and we'll start to put this uh, switch in. All right, guys, so we got it put down in there. Flush, looks really nice, nice button also going to be blue just like all the other lights as you can see so it matches really well we're going to go ahead and uh, clean the dat or this wiring harness up put it all back together we're going to wrap it up here 
like so. And we're just going to go ahead and put a couple of zip ties on it that way. It's not just hanging in there flopping around. But you're just going to throw it back inside there. And then uh, if you ever need to get to it, you'll be able to pull that spazometer uh, thing out. And you'll be able to get right into it. So we'll clip these off here so they're not cutting on anything. And then we're going to just throw it right down in here where it's in and out of the way. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our speedometer back in and we'll button her up. So I'm kind of a zip tie nut. I like to have everything looking nice and clean the best we can. Um, so I threw a few zip ties on here. I'm going to go ahead and snip these off to where they're not going to poke us or anything. But as you can see, we got all these, the harness running in a really good direction. And we wrap this up. I did this all myself. It's a one man crew. Um, so you can do it by yourself. Um, it doesn't take too terribly long. Um, but just make sure you give yourself about an hour or so, just in case you have any issues. But it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're going to go on here and show you kind of how nice these lights look. But as you can see, everything looks nice and flush. we got those pigtails on there. Plug and play. And we're going to throw the hood on and the hood rack. And we're going to show you what these lights look like out the back. So let's kind of show you what this is like. You're going to have your rear lights, obviously, without the side-by-side -side shining. Um, you can move these down um, over to the left. If you want to undo that wing nut that I said I'm going to go ahead and put on, you adjust those however you need to do. Now we'll go ahead and start up the side-by-side. -side. We'll turn these off. And we'll show you the other light by Kimimoto. Put it in reverse. You have a light. Forward. No light, reverse, light, park, light. I'm going to do the two auxiliary lights. Obviously, the side by side's off. So, we're going to turn these on. You can see how bright it is. It's like a spotlight. You can move it, turn it, where the wing nuts come in. Turn those off. We'll show you the rear, the Kimimoto. You're going to see. Reverse, that's how bright it is. Off. Turn the two on, auxiliaries, and that's what you have. Great addition there. All right, everyone, so that kind of wraps up what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, hey, hope you enjoyed the review, the how to install, and the new addition we put onto the 2022 Polaris Ranger XP1000 Crew Cab, the two spotlights, as well as the rear backup light. You saw how nice they are, um, putting out brightness onto the behind the vehicle. You can also turn those so they can shine to the side or to the front. They're going to be a great addition, so we're excited to have them. Hey, let us know if you guys have these on your Polaris or another piece of equipment. Let us know in the comments how you guys like them. But I think we're going to really enjoy them this year and for the future uh, things that we do. So, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you coming back. And until next time, we're out.